Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the workflow between Rhino, Illustrator, and Photoshop in order to um, think about our graphics uh, a little bit more in more detail versus what we've been doing in class at Wentworth um, in the first year class, Architectural Media, uh, where a lot of people have been just simply screenshotting things um, in shaded mode or looking at Arctic mode in its default version uh, and bringing that into InDesign. But uh, today we're just going to talk about how to manipulate um, the display options a little bit in Rhino, um, add some line work, and start to populate uh, our view with people and trees and a little bit of entourage in, in Photoshop. So let's start by just looking at some of these, these view modes. So you're probably familiar with the classic wireframe where you're just seeing all the lines. Um, shaded is also quite popular when you're when you're modeling something. Uh, but as you go through, you can see some other interesting options like rendered view where you're seeing this uh, diagrammatic blue material uh, I've associated with my model. Um, and also some, some 3D people I brought in here. Um, but another mode I really like is Arctic mode. Uh, but this is the default version. So let's, let's go and change some things about this. Go into display options. Uh, it'll pop up this menu here. Uh, you could also escape out of this and you could type in options and it brings up the same same settings and so go down here into the views and these are all the display modes and we can actually manipulate these a little bit so maybe the maybe the background i want i want that to actually be a dark gray so i could change that like that and perhaps i want the color and material usage to be the rendering material um, so that's how I bring that, that blue blue material back in to this view um, rather than seeing in only rendered view. So this is, I'm, I'm actually creating this kind of hybrid uh, version uh, of, of rendered and arctic um, in, this, in this one view. And let's say maybe I also want to see some of the edges of my 3D objects. Uh, so the edge thickness, you could change to one. Or you could use the arrows here to make it thicker and thicker. Let's say we like one. Uh, but you see these kind of crazy colors, the reds and the blues and the cyan. Uh, these are associated with the layer color, um, the, the layers that these objects are on. Um, and we probably don't think that's the cleanest uh, view. So, so let's go into objects and go to surfaces. And we can go to surface edge settings. So these lines that are showing up, those are the edges of surfaces. And rather than use the object's color, let's just use a single color for all the edges. So you see all that turned to black. Um, maybe you could you could even change it to to white. Um, I kind of kind of like that view. And let's. Let's just keep that um, just to show you the uh, the people you could turn on mesh wires. The people are our meshes here. Um, and so you could, you could highlight them, but I don't think that looks very clean for for the sake of this image. Um, and then you could go ahead and press OK. And now that is what your Arctic view is like. Um, you can see the difference between the rendered view when you get the shadow involved. And then the Arctic view. So, so this is just a nice, simple view. Uh, you don't have to make 2D and make line work over this and bring it to Illustrator. Um, you can just kind of do it all in, in Rhino. Um, and if you were just quickly creating a presentation, uh, you wanted to do a quick pinup and just print off various images, this would be a nice, quick way to do so. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about the materials. How did I get this blue, this blue stuff? If you go over to the right, um, you can right click. If you don't already have your materials window open, you can find it there. That was just right clicking up on these tabs. And if you are in a new, if you're in a new file, you're probably going to have um, just a plus sign and no other materials. I have quite a few plastics I made, uh, but I'll just show you how to do that. You hit the plus sign to create new, and I went to plastic. There's tons of options like glass. That's how I generated the glass railing here. 
Well, let's do a plastic and let's make this plastic six. And you can go down here and change the color. So maybe we want a salmon color. And you can mess with the transparency of that. You can see it changed a little bit too in that small icon. Uh, the reflectivity you can mess with and the clarity. So whether you want more frosted or more polished, I just want it real shiny, so I'm gonna keep it there. And you can go to back to your layers, the way I associate the the blue was through the layer material. So I'm gonna go and find everywhere that has a blue circle here. I'm just holding control and I'm clicking on the layers. Then I'm gonna click the blue circle. I'm actually gonna change this to our salmon colored version just to see that quickly change. Um, so you can imagine doing this with realistic materials too. Uh, maybe in a future video, uh, we'll, we'll talk about texture mapping and things of that nature. Uh, but for now, let's just keep this uh, diagrammatic um, plastic material here. So, so now that we've talked a little bit about the display modes and materials, uh, let's also mention uh, rendering. Now you could you could physically render in Rhino if you didn't have a plugin like V-Ray or Maxwell. Um, you could also just generate uh, a screenshot of this. So say say you like this enough. Say you were on the rendered view and you wanted you know you just consider this a rendering. Uh, you could go into this menu, go to capture to file, and you could just produce this this final rendered image and select your resolution here. Um, you could adjust your aspect ratio. You could also scale it up so that it makes even more pixels so you have a, a just a higher quality image. Um, so you could just press OK if you're happy with those settings and you could save it here. You see I've saved a handful already. Let's just call this Axon Salmon. And so it will it will generate that image right now. My computer's chugging along to try to generate that that JPEG. And so in some sense it is it is rendering this image, even just doing a, a view capture to file or or a kind of screenshot. But this is much, much faster than if you were pressing this render button. And, and waiting for your computer to do that. But I can show you that as well here. Um, if my computer doesn't crash, we will continue. All right, so it finally finished. Um, I can show you that. Show you where it's located now. Um, so this is this is the image. You can see it's pretty pretty decent quality. So let's go back. Let's go back to Rhino here. Um, the the other way that you could render something, and it takes a little bit longer. Let's go to the render tab here. Uh, render tools are also available up here. See, there is a render preview. Some it's kind of blurry sphere. And the actual render button is the uh, more clear uh, blue sphere here. So the settings are located over to the right here. And you can see you could mess with the dimension of the image, you could mess with the DPI, the quality. If you do a very high quality, it's going to take uh, your computer very long, especially on a small laptop like what I have right now. Um, so usually I would just keep that at draft quality. You can mess with the background. You could give uh, the background a gradient. Uh, we'll just leave it solid for now. Uh, you could also remove and add back the ground plane so that if the ground plane is here, you, you have a nice shadow that's cast across the ground. So I like to keep that on. Also, the sun is important. Just make sure the sun's on if you're interested in having a shadow. And you can adjust manually where, where the sun is located. Um, so you could do a shadow study uh, around your around your building. You could also mess with the altitude of the sun.
but if it wasn't manual, you could actually set this to a location on the planet and try to get a realistic representation of how the sun sun works in the, the area of your site. So for now, I'll just bring it back somewhere around here. And so the sun, sun's an important element in Rhino. And all these other settings we won't get into, uh, but I'll just show you what that looks like when you start to do a render preview. <clears throat> so when you're when you're rendering, it's just this kind of slow reveal of the the model beyond. So this takes this takes a little bit of time, um, and depending on the machine you have, this could be a very speedy process, or it could take several hours. Um, also depending on the complexity of the materials and the the objects that are in the scene. I will cancel this though. And so you could imagine you could do the same with render, and that will be the final quality image. Uh, but it's definitely not the fastest way to do this. Um, and we have generated a pretty decent quality image by just doing the view to capture mode down here, which can also be accessed by typing view capture to file. So it'll pop up the same, same window. And if this is taking too long, you can certainly adjust this to a smaller smaller quality and, and don't scale it. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention uh, were named views. Uh, it's a really, really great tool for managing various views. So say you had a series of perspectives, um, you had these axonometric views, more perspectives, and you wanted to change or evolve the model, uh, you could go back into Rhino and just capture the various uh, iterations, but using the same same view, so there's a certain consistency across the many views you you could possibly be flipping through in a presentation. Um, so this is just a great way to manage your views. So say we say we wanted to set up a view, uh, another another paraline drawing here, and we wanted to save save this. Maybe call it Axon Two. Now we have this view saved and our original one saved. So definitely utilize this named view um, feature. And if you don't see it, remember, right click on the tabs uh, and go look for it in alphabetical order here. Okay. And so now, now that we've established a handful of those Rhino features, let's talk about getting the line work. So if we go to the view that I rendered, I can control A or select all and make 2D. I'm gonna keep all these, these settings. I want the hidden lines, I want the scene silhouette. Uh, I'd like to group some of them. And then I'm gonna press okay. You're gonna see it load in the bottom right screen. And then it's gonna throw it into plan view. So now if you go into plan, you'll see all these lines. Uh, I'm going to say we don't want all the mesh or the lines generated from the mesh people. So I'm just going to click and delete these. Uh, and I like this. So I'm going to select all this. Go to File, Export Selected. And I want this to be an Illustrator file. So I'm going to go save this to my desktop and call it axon lines from rhino uh, if you were scaling this you could uh, if you had plans and sections and there's a very specific scale you could set that up here uh, but for right now we don't care about the scale just because it's this axon and then we're going to go to photoshop to check out an earlier rendering i generated and look at the the image size um, but let me just exit out of this show you how i would bring this into photoshop so i go to the rendering i want to grab the uh, the recent one we did but i'm going to grab this blue one that excludes the the people in this and just drag and drop and then i'm going to go to image 
image size. Try that again. It's showing up on my other screen. Um, so, so you can see the actual dimensions of this view. And I'm going to keep all this. I'm going to keep it at 120 resolution. You could improve it um, if you wanted to. But I'm going to replicate these dimensions in Illustrator. So I have the same exact uh, ratio and size for my line work. So copy this. Just remember the 40. And let's go to Illustrator. So the one we saved was Axon Lines from Rhino. I'm going to do the same. Just drag and drop the file. Then I'm going to go over to Artboard. Double click over here. I'm going to paste in that dimension. Remember that it was 40. And then Control-0, zoom out. Also going to create a new layer here. And I'm going to go bring in the, the rendering. So you'll see when you bring it in, it's the same dimension here. Make sure it hits the intersection here. Go back to my layers. I'm going to lock this. Then I'm going to control A. And I'm going to hold Alt and Shift to expand this. And this isn't an exact science. But what you want to do is just try to line up the line work with your rendered image. So I'm lining up the, the bottom there. You come in here and shift and move it over. It's tough because there's a lot of white that this gets lost in. So let's See if that's, we'll call it close enough. <clears throat> so now I'm going to control A again. I'm going to double click over here on the stroke. Make sure everything's black. I'll control A again. And I'm now going to try to establish the, the thinnest line weight, which will be the hidden lines. And I think this looks okay, although, you know, the spiral stair is a little messy here. Um, I'm going to keep that. And then I'm going to go into my layers. And so this is the hidden layer. It's the curve layer. I'm going to bump those up a bit. I like the way that looks. And then the silhouette can be even thicker. Say maybe three. So right now I think that looks okay. So just with just with the line work, that's what we're dealing with. And I'm going to save. Just Control S. I'm going to save this, and it'll add the converted text here. Save this, and then I'll head over to Photoshop.